So I keep getting asked to do a set of mods for fishing, or do a set of mods for farming. Well how about this? Today I'm bringing you three mods for every single skill. To start off, let's go with farming. And to do that I've taken us to the island farm here because I have a couple of crops set up. Because... We are using the giant crops mod. Specifically, we're using 6480's giant crops, along with the more giant crops mod, which is the framework that gets this to work. And uh, although I haven't gotten all of these to grow into giants, uh, you can see it's added quite a few. And if you've forgotten what the usefulness of that is, basically you get more than nine crops and apparently they can also have journal scraps. 18 potatoes, 18 red cabbage, 15 parsnip, and it even works with sweet gem berries, which if you pull that off could get you so much money. So there are two versions of this mod. One that only adds giant crop versions of the non-regrowable crops, and then one that adds them to all of them. And the reason it's split is because if a regrowable crop turns into a giant crop, it removes the regrowable crop, which it would usually persist, as you know. So just in case you don't want that feature, it's been split into two. This next mod that I have is actually very exciting because it could make repeat playthroughs of the game a lot more interesting. So I'm going to sell one each of these crops we have here. And now we're just gonna go to bed. The dynamic crops mod randomizes the amount of money that you get for each crop. It also randomizes how long it takes to grow and what price the seeds are. So no longer are star fruits always going to be the best crop. As you can see, I have potatoes here selling for a juicy 370 gold. I believe they normally sell for like 80. Uh, and then we have the sweet gem berry, only 224. So obviously, it's not as crazy as it was before. Interestingly, it doesn't look like it has randomized how much energy and health they increase, so despite potatoes seemingly being one of the most valuable crops in the game, still only heals 25 energy. Now, even though some of these didn't turn into giant crops, that's actually perfect because it allows me to show the last of the farming mods. This one was created by none other than Blade himself, and I haven't tested this out, so hopefully I can do it correctly. This one's called Water Bomb. So I'm going to place this here, water it. It actually works. Okay, so it waters all of your crops in that area. The fun part is, if you mess it up, it just blows up your crops, I'm pretty sure. Let me try that. Yeah, that's a real fun risk and reward, but honestly, if you have a lot of bombs, it could make watering your crops a lot easier, which is fun. Next up, we have the foraging stat. First, we have fruit trees for forageable items. So not the most exciting, but it's cool to have alternate ways to get certain items. These two, the coconut tree and the golden coconut tree, which sells for 50,000 gold, are sold by Sandy at the Oasis. These four, the crystal fruit, hazelnut, spice berry, and wild plum are all sold by Pierre. And then this last one, the cactus fruit tree, is also sold by Sandy. You can buy them just like any other fruit tree, it's just an alternate way to get these items, which I think is pretty neat. Those trees allow me to show off this next mod, Transplant Tree. This, very simply, allows you to pick up a tree and move it elsewhere. Easy as that. So if you ever plant one in a spot you don't want, you don't have to spend an entire season planting another one. You can just move them freely, which is really nice. Unfortunately, you can't move any of the ones that are in your greenhouse but that's fine. For our final mod, this might be the one that I'm most excited for out of this entire set. I'm gonna have to make a new file. And the reason I had to make a new file is because something I didn't even know was possible with mods. With the Wildcat Farm Cave, which is made by Wickedy just a few days ago, we have a third type of cave. Now, just for the aesthetics of the cave, <laughs> they're meowing. Uh, it looks very much like the fruit bat cave without the eyes looking around the sides. So uh, I'm going to sleep for a few days and see what they bring. All right, five days later should be enough. And we have 
Fiber? Uh, some fiber seeds? That's actually pretty late game, huh? And some wool, which is also another good item. A couple of other items I know that can bring are some regular quality fish. In fact, you know what? That makes me wonder if I had the... Oh, I have to test it now. All right, I've slept for quite a few more days. So my idea is I upped my foraging skill to level 10 and I have botanist and gatherer. So chance for double items and all foraged items to be iridium. Just like the fruit bat cave, you pick up items off the ground. And here we got some of those fish that I was talking about. I'm wondering if we somehow get iridium quality items. So wool, obviously not. Fiber, obviously not. Iridium quality fish? No. Normal quality and none of them doubled. So yeah, I am always a fan of having more ways to get different items and this is such a fun and random one that I can't, I, I just love it. Next mods we're showing off all have to do with mining and you might have spotted one already. This is the animated mining pack. It animates all of the mining related items like ores and minerals to make them just pop out a bit more. I included one item in particular, the prismatic shard, because I have no clue why it is so different from the rest. It reminds me of the rotating cat that's been making rounds recently. Very simple mod, but one that adds just a little bit of fun to the game. Oh, the animated mining pack also adds a shine to like the ores you find just chilling around the mines too. All right, I had to search for one for quite a while. I almost thought that I had an incompatibility with some of my mods here, but finally found one. We are using Lumisteria's Clumps and Nodes mod, which adds clumps and giant nodes for many different nodes in the game. I believe this is a giant, giant diamond node. And it's, it's essentially just like the giant boulders, but for all kinds of ores. Let me try and find another one. Found another one. Looks like this one's for iron ore. Yeah, eight iron ore out of one node. And I believe that also works with the skill upgrade that increases the amount of ores that you get from certain things. There's also ones for coal early in the mines, but as I understand, the later you get into the skull cavern and the regular mines, the more common you're going to see those start cropping up all over the place. I wanna find one more. Oh, speak of the devil. This one looks like pyrite, or maybe it's just gold. No, that's literally pyrite. I did not realize that there were ones for individual minerals. Well, now I wanna find another one. Oh yeah, this also added a couple of small rocks. So there are now like gem nodes that will give you multiple nodes and they look a little like clumpier than regular nodes. And also I found this coal node, which, well, that's too coal. So not really the entire world came with that. I think I've also spotted like an enhanced diamond node as well. What, I, I don't even know what this is. Oh, enhanced copper node? It appears so, and sure enough, two diamonds. Wow, you know, funny. I did not know that that mod added as much as it actually did, and that only makes it even cooler. Speaking of cool, I have yet again what I, what I think is one of the coolest mods I've ever found. This one adds new machines to the game that have to do with mining. Drills. There's a different kind of drill for a lot of different kind of mining related items throughout the game. And as you place them, they will just passively mine for whatever kind of material that they're mining for. Even like super, super rare ones like this prismatic shard one and this radioactive ore one. And you may see like, say like, well, that's obviously overpowered. Let me go ahead and give them a good dose of all that. Well, I picked out some of them. There we go. Uh, yeah, just makes them passively. And you might say, well, that's obviously overpowered. Well, the thing is, these are unlocked with your mining level as you get to level 10 mining. So on this account, I'm only actually level one mining. So if we look at our crafting recipes, the only ones we've unlocked are the coal mining drill and stone mining drill. Not too crazy, right? Look at what you need for those ingredients. 10 diamonds, 100 stone, 10 battery pack. It looks like you need 100 of whatever they're mining for. Maybe it changes later down the line. Bone mining drill, so it seems like it's always 10 batteries, 10 diamonds, which fair enough. 10 copper bars, 10 omni geodes, 
10 gold bars, 10 iridium bars, 10 iron bars. How many prismatic shards, I'm wondering? Just two. Okay, you know what? That's fair. Maybe. I still think maybe it should be like 10, personally. Two radioactive bars. Again, I feel like that should also be higher. And 100 stone, of course. It is pretty hard to obtain them. It's not like you're going to be getting radioactive ore at the beginning of the game or prismatic shards super early. You just need to get really lucky. Speaking of new machines, I've got some gnarly fishing mods to show you. So first thing I want to show, I'll walk over to the left here so to not spoil other mods. The fishing info overlay mod. So I have my bamboo pole selected here and if you look in the top left corner, you can see a percentage chance of every fish I'm able to catch. It considers the fact that I haven't fished before, so I have a 40% chance of getting sunfish if I were to fish up any trash. So let's go ahead and fish something up. The second part of this mod is, it shows you what kind of fish you've hooked. I believe this is a sunfish? The sprite looks a little bit different, but... Yeah, that's a sunfish. So now that we've caught the sunfish, suddenly it starts showing all of the other fish we can catch. Because we weren't allowed to catch a flounder before because it's not allowed for your first catch. And same thing with all the trash. And it looks like it actually blurs them out until we catch them. So if I were to fish up, say, an artichoke or something right now. Oh, I like <laughs> another detail. It kind of lights up the icon on the top left for whatever you've caught. All right, got a herring, boom, it's lit up so you can see what you've caught and what you haven't caught. Very useful, very fun if you're just not good at remembering what fish are where. Also, I want to show if I swap to my crab pot, it shows you all of the items that I could possibly get with my crab pot as well, which is really cool. I am a lover of crab pots. This is a bit of an addition to that. Fishing nets, you can put them in and instead of catching crab pot fishes, They'll catch fishing fishes. And I don't believe it, like, obviously it's not going to catch any legendary fish, but it has, like, herrings and these halibut. So it even catches some night fish as well. And it takes uh, bait, just like anything else. And also, just because I'm curious. So if I equip the fishing net, will the fishing info overlay show me? It won't. Okay, so not really compatible in that way, but that's fine. It's not like you're missing out on anything here. Now, I've also added yet another mod that has to do with fishing machines. So I'm going to put these crab pots in the water real quick. So this is called Crab Pot Loot Has Quality and Bait Effects. So I'm going to fill three of these with regular bait, three of these with uh, magic bait, which can catch things from all seasons, and three of these with wild bait, which hopefully it activates because wild bait only has a chance of activating and we're going to see what we catch. So the thing is, I'm actually a bit worried that we're not going to catch any fish that are of a different quality because I'm only level one fishing and we, we only caught two fish to start. But notice the three things I used the magic bait on actually got us rainbow shells, which aren't normally in the crab pot to get list. Muscle is not of a different quality. Rainbow shells obviously aren't a different quality. Clam, still, wait. I did get a silver quality rainbow shell. Interesting, and my man's kind of blocking me here. I need my cockle. There we go. All right, well, we did get one thing that was a different quality. If I were a higher fishing level, it probably would have been much more obvious, but so yeah, those two mods go out to the fishing haters out there, both of crab pots and of the mini game. So I just want to say for the combat mods, I wanted to find a mod that just like gives you a gun. There's not one, unfortunately. Uh, there is, however, the better slingshot, which kind of comes close to that. So this does quite a few things. First of all, the galaxy slingshot, which has always been in the files of the game, is now obtainable for 50,000 tokens in the casino and it is four times damage of the regular slingshot and two times the damage of the master slingshot if you're unaware of that it also adds a little bit of a extra cursor to show if exactly where you're aiming and adds an auto fire mode so if i hold down right click it just auto fires and the galaxy slingshot does it even faster so if you have a reason to do that there you go 
A couple of other changes, apparently there's a couple of bugs with slingshots as is in the game, where if you like cancel your slingshot shot, it doesn't like use up ammo. As you can see, it's not like using up a shot there. So that's good. So these next two combat mods both have to do with slime hutches. Well, to an extent. So most people don't like slime hutches. That's the truth. The first mod that I have here, you'll notice that it's a little different. This isn't from this first mod, it's on the next one. Farm combats will now grant experience. So if you didn't know before, if you have maybe the wilderness farm or you have a slime hutch and you have monsters on your farm, you can fight them, but they won't give you any experience. Now, they do. And they would also count towards uh, the Slayer tasks as well, which once again, normally they wouldn't. Now, you might notice that the area around here is a little bit different. This is thanks to the Mushroom Rancher in Slime Hutch mod, which might not explain by title alone why it looks like this. Effect number two of this mod, you can remove the slime incubator from the corner. And finally, you can make your little containment area nice and square. So next thing's next. What I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna get rid of these three slime incubators because this mod adds a new type of incubator. Once you hit level six foraging, you can craft mushroom incubators for three hardwood and 20 wood. Go ahead and slap these down. And then what you need to incubate something on them is a mushroom and five life elixirs. So I'm going to use two regular mushrooms and we'll use a magma cap on this one. And we'll let it do its thing. All right, we gave it a couple days. Coming back, we can see that we hatched two mushroom enemies and one magma cap mushroom enemy. And what these create, the regular mushrooms create the purple mushrooms, and I believe red mushrooms as well. I'm not 100% sure about that. And if you have a bunch of magma caps, it'll create magma cap mushrooms. So this is just another way to get a bunch of more rarer items out of this instead of just slime. And the interior of the area actually changes according to what monster you have the most of. So right now we have the most of the mushroom enemies luckily they don't hurt you i don't have a slime charmer ring so yeah they just don't hurt thank god and they drop red mushrooms which hey you can farm that too but i'm gonna leave i think i'll have to give it a day oh no immediately it changes to look more like the volcanic dungeon if we have more magma caps than anything else anyway that ought to do it. This is probably the video that has the highest amount of mods that I'm genuinely super interested in, so I hope you like them as well. Thank you all for watching, see you all in the next one, and good night.